Welcome back. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. Today's topic is Sim Smith's internal file chooser. I'm sure most of you have used it at some point or another, but I thought I'd go over its functionality and maybe show you some things that you didn't know about or maybe had forgotten about. Now, the file chooser can be invoked in several different ways. The obvious one is to just click on it. Another way is to invoke a function which requires a file to be chosen. So, for example, selecting an impedance file. Another way is to drag a component either onto the file chooser. I'm going to drop this in the trash bin. Or you can drag a component completely out of the SimSmith window. Again, I'm going to drop this in the trash bin. Now, as you saw, usually when you're done with the file chooser, it disappears. But there are times when you would rather that not happen. And you can make the file chooser stick around by clicking on this little button right here. That's called the pin. And when you pin the file chooser, it won't go away unless you explicitly ask it to. So for example, I'm going to move one of these files onto the Smith chart by dragging it over. And normally when I did that, this file chooser window would disappear, but because it's been pinned, it won't. Let me get rid of this. Pinning the file chooser is good if you're doing a lot of things with it, or if you happen to have a second screen, we are, can leave it up and it doesn't steal any useful real estate. When you're in a particular directory, there are several different ways that the order of the contents can be sorted. So for example, I can sort it as directories come first, or I can sort it so that they come first in time. Unsurprisingly, the last SimSmith circuit file is the most recently used file. I can reverse the chosen order by simply clicking this button. You can see here that TFFT is my oldest directory. Another option for displaying things is to turn on hidden files. And you can see here that these files that start with a pound or a percent or a dot are generally not visible and are generally just backup files or mode files and we don't usually want to see them which is why they're hidden. And there are times when you want to sort not by the basic file name but instead by the extension and you can do that by clicking here and we'll see that Files with extensions, M comes before O, comes before P. So these are all being sorted based on the extension. I should warn you that combinations of these things may or may not produce reasonable results. So turning on time and extension, I don't know what order they're going to be in. It looks like time takes precedence over extension. So be warned that if you have more than one of these clicked, you may not get what you consider to be the reasonable thing. Once you've brought up the file chooser, of course, you need to know how to navigate around. And SimSmith's file chooser has a feature which, which was really kind of the inspiration for writing it to begin with, which is when you know kind of where you want to go, you can just start typing. So for example, I can just start typing a name here. And as I'm typing, the file chooser is sorting down through the, the contents to find something that matches. And here it's matching what it turns out that I want. And so all I have to do is hit return and I will move into that directory. Again, I want to go into this directory and I type it and it goes in just fine. 
actually I want to go on to sample load files and then I want my OCF voila that's where I would get it now I'm not asking it to do anything so so it's not offering to put it anywhere for me but I'll come back to that I'm going to turn off pin and turn that off so now suppose I want to do uh, select a file for the impedance of the load and I click on it and it takes me back more or less where I wanted to go now it turns out that if I've already been a directory where I want to go for example in the sample loads file I can double click over here and it, SimSmith's file chooser will take you to that directory and it will and it will select the file that you were selecting the last time you were there. In this case, remember I had chosen this and I can just say load. Other ways to navigate around are you can go to any one of these by double clicking on it. So if I want to go to the sample loads directory or I want to go to the samples directory, just double clicking on it gets you there. I can click on one of these paths up here. So if I wanted to go to my home directory, I could say, click that. Again, I want to go in there. Fair enough. Now, if you're dragging things, you don't have the ability to click on these. And I'll show you what happens and how you can navigate while dragging. I'm going to pick up a component bring up the file chooser, and now I want to navigate around while continuing to drag this. I have the rightmost button of the mouse held down. And in order to navigate now, instead of clicking on something, you just hover over it. So for example, if I wanted to go into the sample loads directory, I would hover over it. If I wanted to go into my home directory, I would hover. If I wanted to scroll down, or if I wanted to scroll up. So as you can see, hovering over something is the same as clicking the button. I'm going to drop this in the trash bin. When you have the file chooser up, there are some other functions which you may or may not be aware of. Before I get into that, I want to make one blanket statement. SimSmith never moves anything it really copies everything so if you were to click and drag this to another directory this copy would stay behind in the old directory the file chooser is a little reluctant to delete anything or to move anything unexpectedly so it doesn't it just copies things instead of moving them now, a couple of other features that are in here. Let me go to the my home directory, and I have a, a folder here that I might want to zip, and I can zip it by simply right-clicking on that folder and saying zip, and it created a zip file for me. Now, I can unzip something, again, simply by right-clicking on it and saying unzip. And you'll notice that it did not overwrite the pre-existing directory. It wrote a new directory and appended the space one after it. And if I unzip again, it will not overwrite any of the previous ones and will in fact make a third copy of that directory. Again, this is the paranoia of not deleting anything unnecessarily. The latest release allows you to delete entire directories or folders. And again, it asks you if you really want to do this. And I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to say yes. A few other things you can do while here. You can generally, you can create a new folder by simply clicking on the new folder button. You can rename files or directories by clicking on rename or clicking right clicking on it and using the rename option after doing a right click. 
There's other features, not really part of the file chooser, but things which are f related to it. So for example, I showed that you could drag a component into the file chooser, but it turns out you can drag a component almost anywhere. So I can bring up the folder explorer of OS X, and you can do this with your Windows machine as well. And if I drag a component off the screen, the file chooser comes up, but I can actually come over here to my uh, operating system explorer and drop it in there and that works just fine so you can also drag things from the native file chooser or explorer or whatever you want to call it back into simsmith and let me give you an example of doing that I can drag this. I can drag this up to here and drop it on the Smith chart, or I can actually drag it over here and put it in a file. Or I can actually take this and drag the impedance file up into the circuit and it will make a Z block using that impedance file as the characteristics of that component. So that's a quick overview of the various things you can do with the file chooser. Hope that was helpful. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. Thanks for watching. Thanks for using SimSmith.